YouTube it's Satch, welcome to Driver81. Before I get into this video, I just want to do a quick apology. Um, I've been really, really bad at uploading videos for the past couple of weeks and I do want to apologise about that. I know a lot of people are asking about the 986 Boxster giveaway. Um, I'll be doing an update video on that in the next few days. I promise I'll get that video out. Uh, the reason I haven't been able to do any updates on it is because it has encountered a few problems which are in the process of actually being fixed right now. I'm actually waiting for a call from the garage so pretty soon I'll be getting a call um, and now I'll be able to make a video on an update video on what's happened with the car and the current state of the car and where we are with the giveaway. So you join me in my little office here and today's video is going to be about 10 Porsches that you need to buy before it's too late. I've been looking at an old copy of Porsche 911 and Porsche World magazine here. It's August 2012 and I've been looking at some of the prices from six years ago in the back of this magazine and it's phenomenal to think that you could get these cars for such low money. A 3 litre 911SC, they want £14,000, it's for, for sale now for £46,000. There's a few others which have circled as well. A 930 Turbo, they want £26,500, you pay £80,000 for that today. Uh, a 993 Carrera 2, they want £17,500, £75,000 all day long. And finally there's a 911 uh, 964, they want £22,000, now you'll pay £50,000 for that all day long. But it's got me thinking, what cars that are around on the market today for relatively low money will be the future classics, will be the cars to increase in value in years to come. Now I know there are a lot of variables in looking at prices of cars because you've got to look at the wider picture like the economy. You know, people weren't investing in the banks, they were investing in cars because the interest rates were so bad. There's, there's a million different factors like that. But I've just got a hunch. I Every night I'll look through all of the listings, so give me any Porsche, I'll tell you how much it costs basically. Give me the spec of the car, give me uh, the model year, the mileage, things like that, and I'll be able to give you the price of the car. So with that in mind, I can generally spot a car which is good value for money. And if you couple that with the cars which are high end at the minute, the newer cars, obviously they're still fetching a lot of money but which cars have actually hit their bottom level and then will slowly start to rise up again. So here's 10 cars that I believe that will happen to. All right, so the first car is a 986 Porsche Boxster. You can pick one of these up from about 2,000 to 2,500 pounds. It's probably gonna have high miles, but that's okay. Don't worry about that. I've got a one which has 122,000 miles on the clock. It's absolutely perfect. In fact, if you get a one with a higher mileage, you don't need to worry about the IMS and RMS. To be honest with you, if these cars did have that problem, it would have gone before now. So don't worry about getting stuck into a high miler 986 Porsche Boxster. Engines, you've got the 2.5, the 2.7, and the 3.2S. You'll pay a bit more for the 3.2S, but m my opinion is that's the one to go for. Unfortunately, I went for the 2.7 and I do regret it a little bit. Um, incidentally, while we're on about uh, 2.7 Porsche Boxster 986s, subscribe to this channel and I'm gonna give my Porsche Boxster away. Once I hit 100,000 subscribers, that car's being given away. Perfect for dropping the roof in the summer or even the winter, getting a bit of winter sun. I've done it many times myself and it really does prove to be good fun all year round. That's number one on the list and it's probably the cheapest. Number two on the list is a Porsche 996 Carrera 4S. Now you need to go for the facelift model, the one which has the big red stripe along the back of the car. This is the one which has the wide body, it also has the turbo body. So it's got the turbo uh, skirts, the bumpers, uh, the aggressive front end and obviously the wider rear end. This is the car that looks absolutely fantastic and for me is the best 996 available. You're probably going to pay, for a high miler you might expect to pay about £18,000 which is maybe a little rough around the edges but for a well sorted 996 C4S expect to pay up to about £27,000-£28,000. I've actually got a friend who's bought one of these, it was a Category B write-off, he's put a, bit of, put a bit of work into it, he's actually converting it into a track car, 
he paid £10,000 for that car. Although, it, the problem is obviously you can't drive it on the roads, but it's still a fantastic car. Even if you wanted to take it on the track, you wouldn't necessarily associate a Carrera for us with a track going car, um, but he's doing it and it works fine. Okay, next up is the Porsche 944. This is the car which was based on the 924. It's a front engine, rear wheel drive, and prices on these are so low, it's unbelievable. You can pick one of these up for about four and a half, four thousand pounds, maybe it's even less if it needs a bit of work. Uh, expect to pay about 14,000 pounds for one in fantastic condition. Even £14,000 though, these are a great car and a great buy and for sure they're already a classic, never mind a future classic. So that's number three on the list, the Porsche 944. Okay, next car, you're looking at a Carrera 2 or a Carrera 4 in the 996 variant. I used to own a 996 Carrera 4, it wasn't a 4S, but a Carrera 4 and it was a fantastic car. It's an entry level Porsche 911 and you can pick one of these up probably rough around the edges for about £9,000. Expect to pay about £16,000, £17,000 for a top, top Porsche 996 uh, C4 C2, C4 C2, sorry. This is currently the only Porsche 911 that you can get for that price. Now the reason these cars are priced so low is because a lot of people didn't really like the styling. The purists wanted the round headlights. These have the fried egg style headlights. So everything else underneath is a perfect fantastic sports car possibly one of the best value sports cars it's just the styling lets these cars down a bit but i think because these are such an oddball of a 911 these cars will go up in price because people like things which are different people like things which are a little bit strange a little bit left field so that's why I believe this is definitely one of the cars to get if you're looking for a future investment. Okay, where are we? I think we're up to number five on the list. The next one, we're sticking with 996. This time, we're looking at GT3 cars. The 996 GT3 cars is possibly one of, I'm not saying the last, but one of the last cars which is just purely uh, mechanical and you know everything that you put into the car is what you get out of the car. There's no uh, sort of electronic systems coming in and spoiling the drive or anything like that. A person who's driven a 996 GT3, what a phenomenal machine. It goes from like 0 to 150 in like that. It's just a phenomenal, phenomenal car. Um, and I believe that this is probably one of the best value Porsche 911 GT3 cars out there at the moment. Again, we're gonna go back to the fact that it's got the fried egg style headlights, which puts a lot of people off but if, if, again if you can look past that and if you can appreciate the car for what it is mechanically and the performance that you're going to get out of one of these cars you want to an absolute winner so price wise for looking at these cars um, you expect to pay about £60,000 for a Mark 1 GT3 but I would really advise you to go for the, uh, the second generation 996 GT3. That's the one with the updated headlights although they're still kind of fried eggs. Expect to pay about £67,000, £68,000 for one of those with about 50,000 miles on the clock. You can pay more, my friend's got one with 12,000 miles on the clock, buy for him for hundred grand. Um, you probably wouldn't want to do that. There's nothing, you know, there's no difference. But if, you're, if you're looking for a car to go and drive, there's no difference between a car which has 12,000 miles on and 50,000 miles on. So yes, 12,000 or pay a lot more if you're looking for an actual investment. But if you're looking for a car to just purely drive the tits off, then go and buy a car with 50,000 miles on, 70,000 pound, no problem. Okay, for a short time, we're gonna move away from the Porsche 911s and we're gonna start looking at a Porsche Cayman. The Gen 1, Porsche Cayman 987 for me is a fantastic little car. It's got great looks. It's almost getting on towards classic looks, even though you won't find one of these. I think they began production in say 2005 or 2006. They are the early cars, but they are the other cars which are going to get good value. You can either get a 2.7 or a 3.2S. So there's only two variations in the generation one. I think you get a 2.9 and a 3.4 in the second generation. But if you're looking for a low value, go for a Gen 1. Make sure it has got the IMS issue sorted because the IMS and Bose does affect this particular car but the gen 1 if you wanted a 2.7 which is not the one I'd really recommend um, even though it's still going to give you fantastic performance but a gen 1 you're probably looking at about rock bottom price nine and a half to ten thousand pounds at the time of speaking if you want an okay-ish 
S model, so your 3.4 S, then I would say probably look towards paying 12, 13. That's for a lower end of the scale. You can buy even lower prices than that, but they're, they're gonna be dogs. So get one 12 or 13 grand, if you can, stretch to a little bit more. Although I've seen a lot of discussions about whether these cars will actually become future classics or not. Um, there's a lot of people saying, yes, well, I don't think they will because they're produced in such high numbers. Um, but I've got a feeling that they will. I'm not saying they're going to be, you know, so highly uh, demanded like like the the old air cool stuff is. Uh, but yeah, so the Cayman 987 for me is something that I will be looking to get into at some point. I just need to clear a bit of space. <laughs> it goes back to the whole 986 thing, the 986 car that I'm giving away. I need to get rid of that car so that I can create some space for either a 987 Cayman or a 996 Carrera 4S, but that's another story. So the 987 Cayman is the next on the list. Okay, next up on the list, we're looking at, brace yourselves, a Carrera GT. A Carrera GT, I hear you saying, who's got the money to buy a Carrera GT? Well, some people have. And there's a reason why this car's on the list, because yes, it is a phenomenal car, it's a very expensive car, but these cars, they're so in demand. At the moment, there are two for sale in the UK. And do you wanna know how much they cost? Well, there is no price on them. Basically, it's a price on asking. If, 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 you, if you've gotta ask the price of one of these cars, you generally can't afford to buy it. Now, I have been looking at prices of these over the past couple of years, and there have been one or two for sale at any one time, generally looking at about five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand pounds. Now, why is that such a bargain? Well, even at £800,000, I still think it's a phenomenal buy. Because you look at what its rivals are, the Ferrari Enzo. Buy a Ferrari Enzo, 1.9 million. Buy a Pagani, Huayra, whatever you, however you pronounce them, 1.6 million. So, I would definitely put the Carrera GT in the same league as those two cars but you're paying a fraction of the price. These Carrera GTs are in such high demand that if you had one for sale, you could pretty much name your price. I'm not saying you'd get a million pounds for it just yet, maybe 10 years down the line for sure. Uh, but as I say, name your price for it. If you see one for five, six, seven hundred thousand pounds and you've got the money, that's definitely one to buy because look at these car auctions that are going on now. They're selling all the classics for 20 and 30 million. I don't see any reason why the Carrera GT will be any different in 20, 30 years time. Right, number eight on the list. Uh, we're going back to 996, 911 now and it's the 996 Turbo or the Turbo S car. These cars are such, such, such good value for money right now. You can pick up a 996 Turbo Tiptronic for possibly around about 27, 28,000 pounds. You can pick up a manual car with average miles on the clock for about 32, 33, 34,000 pounds. Let me tell you, the performance that you're gonna get from one of these turbos is just shy of the performance you're getting from a GT car. The GT cars you're gonna pay double and more. The turbos look great, they have great performance, but for some reason, the prices are still very, very low. And do you know what? There's no reason for that. I can't, no reason I can think of because the engines are good, the mechanics are good, the performance is fantastic, the prices are low. So what are we looking at? Well, we're going back to the old styling issue. The styling issue on these has the side vents, which are a little bit smaller than the other generations. And of course, you've got the front headlights, the fried egg effect headlight, which to me, <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really starting to love these fried egg headlights. And I think, as I say, as I mentioned earlier, it's because they've got that whole classic look. They've got the left field, the, 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 it's, they're a little bit different, and not many people have got them, not many people have won them, which makes them quite desirable, in my opinion. Um, so again, if I had the money to go and buy a 996 Turbo, well, sorry, no, I have got the money to go and buy a 996 Turbo. What I'm really seeing is, if I had the space, what I need is some sort of warehouse or big garage, and I'd go and buy all these cars, no problem. Obviously, not the Carrera GT, because I don't have the money for that. Uh, but that's the next on the list. Number eight on the list is the 996 uh, Turbo. Me, personally, I wouldn't be dead against getting a Tiptronic. Obviously, between the Tiptronic and the, uh, the PDK, the PDK is obviously better, but they didn't do the 996 Turbo, or they didn't do the 996 generation 
in a PDK. The PDK came in with a 997 generation, so be aware of that. Don't bother looking for a PDK 996. But I would go for a manual. It's all about driving, you know, feeling your way through the gears for me. That's what I love to get out of a sports car using a manual gearbox. So that's on the list, a 996 Turbo. Okay, so number nine on the list, uh, we're gonna be going back to a current classic. It's also a future classic as well. Um, but we're looking at the 964, tur uh, not turbo, sorry, 964 Targa. The 964 Targa is probably a little less desirable, probably a bit more desirable than the actual Cabriolet or the convertible, but in between you've got the Targa, which kind of has like a hard back sort of roof. Um, and it has the covers which you can uh, take off and store away. Uh, but these look, these are good, great looking cars. They won't fetch as much money as say the Coupe, the Carrera 2 or Carrera 4. Whereas you might be looking at say 50, 60, 70 grand for one of those cars. Um, but the Turgo, the, the, the tur Turgo, what's a Turgo? The Targa represent. But the Targa represents really good value for money and you can pick one of these up for about £36,000. £36,000 is going to get you one which might need a little bit of work doing. Either the body or the engine might need a bit of work doing it. But you can get them for that money. Just look around. Um, probably a really, really well sorted one. You're going to be looking at forty to £45,000 for one. But they look great. They have instant classic looks and they will certainly turn heads no matter where you take it. So that's number nine on the list and it is the uh, 964 Targa. Okay, we've got one more car to give you. It's car number 10 on the list. And again, we're sticking with the classics, uh, the current classics that is. We're looking at the Porsche 911. This is a 912. Well, what's a 912, I hear you ask? Well, a 911, they've famously been fitted with the, uh, six, the flat six, six under engines over the years. The 912 actually has a four cylinder engine, so you're not gonna get the same amount of power or the same amount of performance out of the 911, the, uh, the flat six engines, but you, what you are gonna get is the exact same looks of the car, the exact same classic styling, the same interiors, pretty much. Um, but as I say, you're not gonna get the fantastic performance. Well, not that they were fantastic, but they were, um, they were certainly quicker than the 912s will be with it being a six cylinder. Um, so. This is a, an entry level sort of classic, if you like, a real, real classic. So you're, you're going back to the 60s here. Now prices for these cars, very good. You're looking at about 15,000 pounds if you want a car which needs some restoration work on it, which is really cheap. You probably wouldn't be buying one of these cars uh, to run as a driver, mind. Um, if you want a good driver, a good spec car, which is ready to drive away, ready to use, you're probably looking at about 33 to 40,000 pounds for one of those. Still fantastic money for an amazing looking classic car. Well, if you've got this far, thank you very much for sticking around. Um, what I'd like you to do is please, if you can, just like that video. Obviously, please subscribe to the channel as well. As I mentioned earlier, I'm giving away this Porsche Boxster 986 once I hit 100,000 subscribers. So I'll be giving that away to one of the subscribers. So if you want to be in with a chance, just hit that button, it takes two seconds. And while I'm on the subject about the 986 Boxster giveaway, I'll be making a really quick update video on that very, very soon. As I say, still waiting for a call from the garage to say that the car's finished. They've had that car now for over a week. Um, so they, they've told me today would be the day. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time.